Washington is a very, and I and I'm told, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm, I'm told if it's not unique, it's unusual that there is such a strong sense of um, collegiality amongst the various competing organizations. And yeah, I think that that seed was planted a long time ago, uh, back when, when uh, I mean, Cathedral Choral Society, of course, was the first. The, the, and then it spawned, as Norman likes to say, it spawned other groups. Certainly Norman, as a, as a direct beneficiary of the Cathedral and of Callaway and, and all the wonderful things that, that were and still are happening on Mount St. Alban. But I, you know, I, I just, I can't explain why, but I just feel that because we're so blessed with such coral, uh, with such a rich coral culture that we, that, that's, uh, that's been uh, nurtured and created, and because Washington has such an abundance of, uh, you know, so many people that, that come and want to make a difference, that, you know, come and leave. I mean, you know, people do come and go in Washington, but... Yeah, I think we're in a position to 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 not feel threatened by each other. You know, I mean, if 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 it were just this tiny little pool of singers, and we're all, then you know, it would be very different. So, to a certain extent, it's the nature of this city and this community that permits us to to get to our better inner selves, if you will, and uh, and and just be happy for each other and know that there's enough to go around. First time I met Riley was uh, at the Cedar Lane Unitarian Church uh, out in Bethesda when he appeared at playing the harpsichord for a Messiah sing-along. And I, as a young musician in Washington, this was back in the 60s, knew right away that this was a huge, major talent. And uh, Riley and I date our friendship from that very encounter that evening. We were back in our 20s and both sort of, you know, 20 something types, you know, of musicians, very serious, very enthusiastic, very energetic. And I had just conducted my first St. Matthew Passion of Bach at the Kennedy Center. And he had come to it. He knew it already very well and had definite ideas about it. But at any rate, he came over to my house. We were living down, in, we were like two blocks away from each other. So he dropped in the next week sometime. And we got talking about the St. Matthew Passion and he didn't like some of the ways I did some of the courses or something. And I was convinced I was right, and he was convinced he was right. Anyway, we got in this horrendous argument, and I stood up and said, Riley Lewis, get out of my house. And he walked up the steps from this recreation room, and he said something back to me, and I said something back to him, and he walked out the house, and he was, I think we had been drinking sherry or something, and maybe we had to have too much sherry. Anyway, it was hysterical. The next day, I called him up and apologized, and we came over and laughed at all, laughed at it all, and you know, it didn't interrupt anything. But it was—it's the passion of being so young. It would have to be one of the many Bach performances that it's been my honor and privilege to be at. Um, he, his transcendence in this field is just impressive in the extreme. Extreme. He—he's able to bring total um, musicological authority and musicianship and musicality uh, to every note. It just drips from his fingertips, you know, what Bach is all about. Uh, when I listen to the music of Bach, I feel like Bach is talking to me. And when I listen to Riley's performances of music by Bach, I feel like I'm in a three-way conversation. Bach is talking to Riley, and Riley and Bach are both talking to me. And he it manages to reach that conversational level in, in his ability to communicate the special language that is the language of J.S. Bach. He has such an innate, gentle, chamber approach to Bach that is very intimate and very touching and heartfelt. But there's always music happening. There's always love apparent. There's always communication of the human nature of Johann Sebastian Bach um, that you do, that's really unique I mean his phrasing everything is just comes from the heart and I don't think Riley's performances draw attention to himself which I think is great you don't you're not aware of a conductor's interpretation Riley Lewis's interpretation of Bach's B minor mass you just you hear the B minor mass and it's touching it's like Bach is speaking to you as a human being you know with all the flaws that we have as humans and all the shortcomings and all the beauties and glories do but it's uh 
it's very genuine and very real and I think that's what makes him unique. I've often joked, I mean, when I got the job, when I got the job at the Cathedral Choral Society, I didn't think I had a prayer, and for a number of reasons. One, I'd been around there all my life, okay. Two, I didn't have an accent. My hair was pretty normal, wasn't, I'm not tall. Didn't, yeah, you know, I mean, and I, I don't know, I just thought, well, why not, you know, throw my hat in the ring. So nobody was more shocked or stunned than I was when I actually got it. So having said that, I have to say, you know, the myth of the conductor, the maestro myth, there's a great book called The Maestro Myth. Um, you know, there are, there are all kinds of things that go into conducting, but the interesting thing is we fixate on how a conductor looks on the podium. And frankly, a lot of conductors fixate on how they look on the podium. I mean, you see time and time again conductors in rehearsals who are one person, it's not, almost like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and they get up on the podium, whoa, where'd that come from? You know, sort of thing. Riley has a way of getting people to work hard, and it's fun. And, and I say that as a real compliment to him. I think he is just, I've never seen a person who is so universally loved by everybody from the first time he, they meet him and until decades later knowing him. He is, is that, that real gift. He shows up at just about everything. And I have seen him at some very unusual things, you know, very remote, very small things that uh, I would just not have expected him to be there, but there he is. It's, uh, <laughs> it's maybe he's our guardian angel, you know. But it, it's kind of a little, maybe this might be overstating a little bit, but it's kind of a blessing uh, that he, to know that there's a person in town who cares not just about his own works, but cares about the work that everyone else is doing. He feels he wants to keep up with everyone else. He's certainly very supportive of everyone else, as we are of him. And uh, it's uh, a, a bright, shining uh, part of, of the choral community here, uh, all, of, all of whom, you know, really get along with each other. I think he's probably uh, the prince of, of communication amongst all of us and uh, the kind of the un, untitled head of our choral community here in terms of just aren't we in, in this wonderful field together. It isn't it great to be able to make music. You know, it is a ministry. It really is. You know, when you're, it's a community. These are souls. These are, you know, every one of these people brings so much, uh, not just in talent, but, you know, vulnerability and their ups and downs. And you have to care about that, I think. I really do. You know, just thinking about the Ovation Awards and this wonderful opportunity for all of us in, in the choral field to gather together, um, I look forward to it every year, and, and particularly because it does showcase in a, in a very balanced way the, the wonderful gifts uh, that we have in this city. And when I think about Stanley, just as I've thought about so many of the other awardees before, um, I think about the community of artistic leadership, this opportunity for us to come together that Corrales Foundation has, um, that Gretchen Kerman has envisioned and that now is going into its next five-year cycle, I guess. Um, this this is, it sends an important message to all of us that, um, that we're in this together and that we can truly celebrate each other. Uh, I like that, and of course, so every year I look forward to the people that are having their moment of, of, of spotlight. I was very honored to be one of them. I guess maybe I was even the first, but then I, I have been around a while. I was going to wear a t-shirt that a singer gave me on Monday and shock the hell out of you because it's this really, I was just going to come in in jeans and a t-shirt and it, and it had Bach and it said, there's really nothing to it. All you have to do is play the right note at the right time in the organ. Is it, you know, she just yeah. gave it to me before the rehearsal. So I did my little da 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 because I didn't have a jacket. Well, maybe I did have a jacket because I was coming from a meeting. So I, you know, and then I put on the t-shirt and I thought, no, I you know, I just hope and pray we won't have to do the hallelujah chorus. But... Thank you.